in Sunday school class, this is too much, in Sunday school class, in Sunday school class, Deb was uh, talking about uh, this horrible uh, Ebola outbreak in uh, Africa and how uh, <coughs> Doctors Without Borders, Samaritan's Purse, Christian organizations have uh, people over there trying to help <coughs> all non-essential people being sent out of the region. But uh, two American doctors who are with Christian organizations, well, a doctor and, a, and a, like a nurse's aide, have both contracted the Ebola, and the survival rate is about 10%. Now, uh, what happens is, is uh, it just feels like normal fever or whatnot, but then uh, you start bleeding from all the openings in your body, your ears, your nose, your mouth, and uh, huge blood blisters all over your body, and, and it's a horrible, painful way to go. And we don't have a way to fix it yet, although they're, they're trying a few different things. But it, one, remember to pray for those folks. And uh, secondly, it reminded me of, uh, remember I told you how one of the ways that the Christians got accepted, the Roman Empire, not that acceptance was their key or their desire, but a uh, plague hit the city of Rome. And it was so bad that all the rich people, everybody who had some place to go were vacating the city. The city of Rome was actually hollowed out, this great imperial city was empty and they left behind their family members to die on their beds and many many Christians stayed behind and they would go from house to house walking into the houses uh, bathing the, the sick bringing them food taking away their their refuse and uh, in that way they were able to save the lives of many people but also many Christians died doing that that's not ancient history. We have Christian people running to trouble today. And we need to pray for our brothers and sisters. I also think about how we think persecution is an ancient thing, and yet more Christians are dying now for their faith than at any other time before, even during the time of the Roman Empire. And uh, Dad and I were watching an interview of this adorable little gal. I don't know, she's probably 14, 15. Uh, I think it was on CNN, might have been Fox, can't remember. And uh, she was, uh, she had come out of, of Nigeria where we, we have uh, Boko Haram, uh, means all things Western are forbidden. Uh, they, re remember that group that stole, kidnapped the 300 girls, the high school gals? Well, that was from a Christian school, <coughs> trying to force them to become Muslim. And uh, this wicked militant group is going around burning villages and, and raping and pillaging and this little gal Nigerian gal she uh, she was in her village and uh, they heard gunfire and they heard fighting going on so she, her brother called her dad said don't come home there's fighting in the area well he said there's been fighting before I'm coming home <laughs> that was like the key for dad to come home you know so he left work and, and arrived there and the fighting was on the outskirts of town. It's, you know, it's a town, so who knows where the fighting's going to be. So he went to take a shower, and uh, while he was taking a shower, the soldiers busted into their home, not the soldiers, the militants, and uh, the Islamic militants, and said, uh, where's your dad? Well, he's taking a shower. So they said, okay, we'll wait, which is funny. Uh, and they waited, and they thought they waited long enough, so they thought he's taking too long, so they busted in. And right in front of her and her brother, they shot the dad and uh, killed him. Well, first they, they said, uh, you have to deny your faith in Jesus. And he said, uh, how can I deny my faith in Jesus? If I deny uh, him before men, he will deny me before our Father in heaven. Uh, and he was a, he was a pastor. And uh, so they, they shot him down in uh, his son, who was about a uh, little uh, 14, maybe, uh, he, he said, why did you shoot my dad? Why did you shoot my dad? And they said, shut up or we'll kill you too. And the, uh, one, soul, the one militant said, don't kill him. He's just a little boy. 
Uh, the other one says, okay, sit down over there and shut up or we'll kill you. And, but the brother couldn't hold it in. Why did you shoot my dad? Why did you shoot my dad? So they shot and killed him right in front of the sister too. Uh, and then they left. And then shortly after that, the Nigerian military came through and she was rescued. Uh, and now she's in the United States. But here's a dad who wouldn't deny Jesus in front of his own kids. We think that Christians are running to trouble uh, only in the old stories of the saints or Christians are dying for their faith only in these old stories. Brothers and sisters, we live in an artificial bubble right now, an odd time in history where our lives are pretty good, where we can become Christians, we can follow Jesus, and we don't pay much for it. Uh, one, I'm bringing this up so that we can remember to really love our brothers and sisters around the world. Uh, think about all those families. Pray for them. Pray for the brave Christians who are helping uh, people in difficulty all over the world. Pray for those who are asked to deny their faith or die. And by the thousands, they are not denying their faith. Uh, but also I bring this up because we don't want persecution. Uh, pray that it doesn't come. But we should be in prayer that, Lord, regular life is knocking me off stride. I pout, I, I feel depressed, I get ornery, I get bitter. I, all these things in my life is good. And I want to be more thankful. And Lord, I want to enjoy this life you've given me. And if you call me to sacrifice, to suffer, uh, to be rejected, to have face scorn or humiliation, lack of a of promotion, your job, whatever, whatever you ask me to face, Lord, for your name's sake. Father, I want to embrace the cross, and I want to take that, and I want to live it. And Lord, if possible, please use my life to show other people your goodness. Everything I say, Lord, my very words, let them reflect you. My habits, Lord, the way I act towards other people, the things that I do, let them reflect you. I want people to see Jesus in me, Father. the way we love one another, the way we let go of bitterness, the way we're quick to forgive. What are you doing, brothers and sisters? What are we doing? Let's not be ashamed of Jesus. Let's be ashamed of our behavior that would keep some, even one person away from Jesus. My sisters, my brothers around the world, enduring so much, and I can be so, so selfish. And I, I, want to, uh, I want to stand with them and honor them by living a life for Jesus right here, right now. Uh, we should live life with Jesus in difficulty, and we should learn how to live life for Jesus when you know what? I've got food. I've got a home. Let's... Uh, Quiet our hearts and pray. Dear Lord, he Heavenly Father, uh, we don't, we're not here to be entertained. We're not here to have our ears tickled. But Father, we're here because uh, we know that uh, you're real. We know that you've taken care of our sin problem that we are, uh, when we put our faith in you, Lord, that you forgive, that you're eager to forgive. And Lord, uh, we're here because we're part of your family, and you've commanded us to get together, and we want to learn. We want to learn more about you, how to, how to be like you, and how to humble ourselves, how to be uh, filled with your truth and, and your love. Father, uh, you've made us, and you've given us a beautiful world to live in, Lord, we don't want to be Pollyannish. We don't want to live in a fairy tale world. We live in a real world of difficulty. But Father, when the good days are here, help us to enjoy those days because we know in this life hard days are coming. Lord, too few, too few people have bent their knee to you. Too few people have confessed their sins. Too, too few people have accepted your invitation to, to eternal life and forgiveness and, and everlasting joy with you, Lord. Father, Father, please take this 
church of messed up but saved people, people that you love. Please use us, Lord, for your glory, for your kingdom. We want children to know you. We want uh, young couples to know you. We want singles to know you. We want those in the, in the middle of their lives to know you, Lord. We want the elderly to come to you in faith and joy, and we want to fill up this room with praises of rejoicing and, and praises for your goodness, Lord. And, and Father, help us to... Uh, Find ways to unlock our community, Lord, to reach out to our city, Father, uh, to grab souls because every day, every step, we're one day, one step closer to, to heaven, Lord, and we don't want to take just a few with us, Lord. It's too few. Make us hungry for so souls, Lord, and Father, give us your love for the church, our brothers and sisters, and your love for the lost. Thank you for your Bible, Father. We're here, and we want to learn. Please uh, work in our hearts and minds this morning. We pray all of this in your name, and thank you, Lord, for listening. Amen. Foundation Bible Church. Inconveniently located two blocks northwest of the Janesville Athletic Club.